The six-person crew of Endeavour is delivering the Node 3 Tranquility and the Cupola modules to the International Space Station on STS-130, in essence closing out construction of the station's U.S. segment. First-time mission commander George Zamka is making his second space flight. The Marine Colonel was born in Jersey City, but has also lived in New York City, Irvington, New York, Medellin, Columbia, and Rochester Hills, Michigan. Zamka considers all of those places to be his hometowns and says it was a special feeling seeing some of them from orbit during his most recent mission, STS-120, in 2007. When you leave your hometown, you always, I think, have that sense that you're, you're going away from it and you're, you wonder when, when's the next time you'll, you'll be back. Um, and uh, it was neat uh, when I did see those places. Zamka holds a bachelor's degree in math from the U.S. Naval Academy and a master's in engineering management from Florida Institute of Technology. His service overseas as a fighter pilot includes tours of duty in Korea, Singapore, Southwest Asia, Kuwait, and Iraq. Zamka, who was selected as an astronaut in June 1998, is proud to be heading up the crew that is putting on the final touches to the International Space Station. Now, when we attach Node 3, uh, the appearance of the station is going to change forever. So uh, the, the space station will become uh, what we have wanted it to be, a, a workplace uh, for science and research uh, with all the environmental systems that we need to sustain uh, humans on board it uh, for a long time. Terry Virts is the crew's pilot. The Maryland native who grew up in the city of Columbia is making his first space flight something he's had a desire to do since learning about the Apollo program in kindergarten. My parents worked at the Goddard Space Flight Center, so that wasn't directly involved in Apollo or the human space flight, but uh, there were rockets and talk of space, and so at a really young age, I was interested in space and, and being an astronaut. The U.S. Air Force Colonel holds an undergraduate degree in math with a minor in French from the U.S. Air Force Academy and an advanced degree in aeronautics from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. He has flown fighter jets in the U.S., France, Korea, and Germany. Since being selected as an astronaut in July 2000, Wirtz has been a capsule communicator, or CAPCOM, on several missions, which has given him a true appreciation for the work that happens behind the scenes. Flying space shuttles is a complicated thing. It's, it, it requires a lot of very smart and talented people, from the people that do the manufacturing to the engineers and managers who make decisions. And uh, it's the people here that make it really a special place to work. STS-130 is the second space flight for Kay Heyer, a captain in the Navy Reserve. The native of Mobile, Alabama, flew on the 16-day STS-90 Neurolab mission in 1998. One of the things she's looking forward to on this mission is getting up close and personal with the International Space Station. To see it in real life, if you will, uh, with our own eyes is just going to be very exciting. And we're going to certainly have a lot of cameras out and, and getting pictures as we, uh, as we approach the International Space Station, as well as when we undock from the International Space Station. Heyer earned a bachelor's in engineering resources management from the U.S. Naval Academy and a master's in space technology from Florida Institute of Technology. In 1993, she became the first female in the military assigned to a combat air crew, flying patrols in the Atlantic and the Caribbean. She didn't initially consider the Navy or becoming an astronaut because at one time there were no women in those careers. However, when those opportunities became available to me, that's when I started realizing, wow, this is something that I could do and I could apply for. And I was very fortunate and the timing just all worked out for me. Dr. Steve Robinson is a veteran of three space shuttle missions. STS-85 in 1997, STS-95 in 1998, and the STS-114 return to flight mission in 2005. The Northern California native was also a backup member of the International Space Station's Expedition 4 crew. Robinson has plenty of spaceflight memories, but one of his most defining experiences was seeing his first shuttle launch in person, which was after he became an astronaut. I'll never forget hearing and feeling and feeling the crack. You know, the, the sound is almost too big for the air to handle, and, uh, and, and the light is almost too bright for your eyes to comprehend. And, 
you see this 20-story building-sized thing leap off the ground and go shooting off into the, into the sky. It's just something you, I didn't really expect, I guess. Robinson says aviation has always been a big part of his life. He completed a double major in mechanical and aeronautical engineering at UC Davis and a master's and a PhD in mechanical engineering at Stanford. He was working as a NASA scientist when he was selected as an astronaut in December 1994. Robinson, who has also worked as a graphic artist, a surveyor, and a radio disc jockey, says what he likes about this crew is its versatility. You know, this person has a skill that maybe I don't have and vice versa, and so the complementary skills going together in this crew has come, uh, uh, come together to bond us into a team that, you know, we feel like we're really ready to do this mission. Nicholas Patrick, a doctor of philosophy in mechanical engineering, is one of the spacewalkers on the crew. This is Patrick's second space flight. He flew on STS-116 in 2006. Patrick, a citizen of both the U.S. and the United Kingdom, was born in the Yorkshire Moors, near the home of James Cook, the captain of the famed 18th century sailing vessel Endeavour. We would go walking in the Yorkshire Moors uh, and go and see the monument that was erected to him. And that's one of, the, one of my earliest memories, actually, of, of uh, wanting to be an explorer. He began with sailing, an interest that was eventually replaced by a fascination with aviation. Patrick learned to fly as a member of the Royal Air Force's Cambridge University Squadron. He holds three degrees in addition to his Ph.D., a bachelor's and a master's in engineering from Cambridge, and a master's from Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Patrick, who designed jet engines and cockpits before coming to NASA in August 1998, says that all of his years of study were worth it. I obviously was at school and into my 30s getting a PhD in mechanical engineering. So education's played a very important role in my becoming an astronaut and my continuing to be an astronaut. And I think it would have played an important role whatever I had gone on to do. United States Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Bob Bankin, the lead spacewalker on the crew, is making his second space flight. He flew on STS-123 in 2008. Bankin grew up in St. Anne, Missouri, and says doing construction work there for several summers taught him the value of hard work, but it also taught him something else. I saw the benefit to an engineering education and, and how I could be the guy who was designing how things were going to be done versus the guy who just implemented them after somebody else worked out the details. He applied the work ethic he learned to pursuing that education, earning two bachelor's degrees, one in mechanical engineering and one in physics from Washington University, and a master's and a Ph.D. from California Institute of Technology. Bankin joined the Air Force as a developmental engineer, designing and testing new weapon systems. He was working at the Air Force Test Pilot School when NASA selected him as an astronaut in July 2000. For more details on the crew of Endeavour and its mission, STS-130, log on to www.nasa.gov.